All right. Buy these set of screwdrivers for five bucks. I'm gonna convert this like a um, R Sumacron to uh, Nikon mount. Got this. Got the lens. This is a Sumacron R 50 mil f uh, f2. It's um. I think this is a single pan version because you can see there's only yeah there's no second cam I think this is a single cam came off of a Leica Flex SL for my Nikon FE it's an older camera but it was given to me from a family friend who bought a brand new after uh, He's tour in Vietnam. And this is the adapter. Looks like a you know, very good, good built. I don't know what brand this is because I bought this on eBay from a new old stock. And most important of all, I have a like a back lens cover just in case I want to close this in. So let's see how long it will take me to do this. So basically, I take these six bolts off and also the bolts associated with the cam that needs to go. Other than that, I think you're good. You just have to do it very carefully because, because there's a ball bearing that makes these aperture, aperture ring clicks, you know. So you don't want to lose that ball bearing and that ball bearing goes to these little divots here. So generally, that's how I think it shouldn't take very long. All right, I removed uh, the mounting ring in the back. There are six screws. They're all the same size, which is nice. This go in the middle um, right here of the mounting ring. And let's see here. Okay, that's fine. Let's go in the mounting ring. And this right here, the aperture, hooked onto this. So you have to unbolt these three tiny screws to take the um to take the mounting this inner ring out before you can remove this. So that's nine screws now. As you can see, these cams are held together by these four screws. So you have to take these four. Out. Okay, so once you take these out, okay, there are um, these washers right here. I'm thinking I'm going to keep those in. So by putting these screw back on there, um, so I'm going to leave it in there. Note that um, right here. You see 16, so the high end of this guy is goes to, or the 16, so, so that's kind of where it's at. Looks like somebody serviced this lens before, or it's a fun manufacturer where they inscrape something here and there. Um, yeah. So one thing I want to note that on none of the screws, I feel like it's very tight to the um, to the lens. Also, as you notice, none of these screws have any Loctite on them, so that's good. So when I put those back, I don't think I need to, you know, crank it down. So you know, um, so when I'm done, I think I'm expecting just have this ring here, these two three screws and the cam that's it and then oh and the the back mount so this will go on there um one thing i want to point out is let's see see this right here that's the that's the ball bearing that's sitting on the spring that makes your aperture click so when you unbolt the mount make sure you don't lose 
this ball because otherwise you would you just effectively declict your um, your lens. This is the Nikon mount. <clears throat> you can see that I kind of dust it a little bit. Um, these clicks that go to this little ball bearing here. I was able to put the screw back on and you know was able to tighten it down to the to these two washers so I don't lose it. The process is highly reversible, so I need to keep all these parts in case I need to put it back together. You can see these are the two cams. One of the pet peeve of mine is that when you well I think any seasoned repair person will tell you. The width of the screw driver need to be the same width as the screw. That way you don't strip it. Um, something kind of like a repair one on one, you know. So making sure you have the right side screw for this kind of work. But the screw, I didn't really crank it down. I just, you know, finger tight. That's that's really enough. All done. So um, these screws, just the finger tight maybe like a one eighth of a turn or something after finger tight is good enough. Um, like I said, we have these are the spare parts left and then the like amount, you know. So overall, it's pretty straightforward. I was able to spend only like maybe 30 minutes, including I'm taking a video for you guys. And now you can put that on the, the back on the Nikon, no, it's Nikon one. Um, one thing I do need to point out, I notice, is when you, actually, let's see this. See, right now, wide open lens is F2, but you can see it's not really on F2. However, rest assured, it, the first click is on F2, it's still wide open. So you have a little bit of a, or should I say, nothing stopped this um, aperture ring, seems like, um, from going over a little bit. So for maybe is the adapter, the, you know, the mount adapter, a very different, you know, different brands you buy, you might have different experience. But anyway, so the first is fine. The, the click is nice and solid. But once you hit 16, here's the thing I don't know about. So this is between 11 and F16. But if you go to 16, I don't see it change much. In term, I don't shoot F16, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm just wondering if that will cause any uh, issues but i'm sure that if i run through a raw film through it and just purpose purposely shoot f16 and see if this is truly f16 or um or not so chance i think it's probably f16 here whereas right here between 6, 11 and 16 um i'll probably be underexposed you know F11, let's see, it does open up a little bit. And F8, yeah, that's why I six. So that works fine. One thing to note that once this lens converted, you're losing your auto diaphragm. So that means you, if you don't shoot wide open, you're gonna have to focus with the duck right aperture you want to set it for. Like if I want to shoot at f4, then I have to put this on f4 and my viewfinder might be a little bit darker, you know. Um, but if you want to mount this lens on a mirrorless camera with adapter, well, you're already used to the uh, lens without the auto diaphragm, so it's fine. Some people may have this question. By changing the lens mount from Leica R to Nikon, well, I retain infinity, like, you know, this lens has a hard infinity right here. And the answer for that is yes. I was able to um, focus on infinity with the lens set on infinity. So this is a really good thing. Okay, 
Here's another look at the camera from the front. Looks pretty sharp.